bushcraft. What do you need and how you get started? Let's check it out. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and clicking on the, the video. Yeah, bushcraft. Now, what do you need to get started? What's it all about and what do you need to get started? That's what we're going to talk about today. You find me in the heart of Mid Wales, only a few miles from home, on the banks of the River Rivon, and at last, a beautiful spring day. So what we're going to do, a bit more of a walk now, find a nice spot by the river, sit down, and we'll have a talk about bushcraft. Clananus Church, really old Welsh church. It's set in this beautiful location, right next to the river. Right, I think there's a spot we can never sit down, just down by the river. Let's go have a look at it. Now, just to put it out there, I'm no bushcrafter. Yes, I do a few things in the outdoors. I can make a few pot stands and whatnot, but um, I don't consider myself as a bushcrafter or bushcraft expert or whatever you want to call it. So you can take all my information with a large pinch of salt, can you? So basically all I'm going to do in this video is run through my take on things. So bushcraft to me is a way you can utilize your natural surroundings and materials to complete certain tasks, whether it's cooking, shelter building, um, even making utensils, tools, all that sort of good stuff. Out of the things you find in nature and by using your knowledge on how to do so. And bushcrafting is a fantastic hobby to get into. And you can get yourself out in the countryside in all weathers, in a group, by yourself, with friends, and just enjoying your surroundings, isn't it? That's what it's all about. Some people get a bit hung up on certain elements of bushcrafting, certain techniques, certain clothing, certain tools you should have, but I'm not into all that. So, what you need first, well in my opinion, is decent clothing, isn't it? A good pair of boots, decent pair of trousers, hard wearing, nothing will retain moisture so it dries quickly, and some sort of good hard wearing jacket or top. Now I'm not saying you should go out there and buy all the foul raven stuff, or whatever it's called, you see a lot of people got the same sort of trousers, the same boots, the same top, same knife, same haversack. They don't have to all look the same. They don't have to buy all the same gear. When it comes to boots, you've got your army surplus boots, you've got walking boots, your hiking boots. You can even go out in a pair of wellies if you want. Obviously where you're going will determine what sort of footwear and clothing you're going to need. But don't think when you're going to bushcraft and you need to spend 150, 200 pounds on a pair of boots. A good solid pair of boots, waterproof, will do the job. Same as the trousers, like I said, you could fork out for foul raven stuff if you want to look like everybody else. Don't get me wrong, they're a quality piece of clothing. I just wear these, well, these 50, 60 pounds pair of trousers. They're extremely durable. They've got extra padding and, and protection on the knees. They're waterproof and when they do get wet, they dry really quick. And that's basically all you want. Same as the top. Today I'm wearing an army surplus thermal top. Again, it's cheap. It does the job. I'm not going to go home and run to mama if I snag it on a bramble or something. So, good pair of boots, good pair of trousers, and a good top, and a couple of layers. That's all you need. Now, other clothing you might need, especially in this sort of weather. Sun hat. Should have brought my shades. Maybe a shamag. And maybe even a midgey net. Especially if you're up in Scotland, or you're near some lakes or stagnant water. Always a good thing to pack in your bag. 
And one of the most important pieces of clothing to pack for bushcraft is a good pair of gloves. Not only will it protect your little fingers, but if you're using fires, you've got hot pans, yeah, good pair of gloves, essential. So that's your clothing sorted. I'm gonna go and filter some water at the river and have a quick drink and we'll push on and we'll talk about what tools you need for bushcraft. Let's go. Now I've just left the riverside and come up some forestry. Now this is a route I've never been before, so hence the map and compass. So there's another thing to consider about bushcraft. Now if you're one of these bushcrafters who take a vehicle and then walk about 10 yards and then set up camp, then you won't need a map and compass. But if you're the type of guy who likes to pack a bag, go off into the bit of the wilderness somewhere, what wilderness we have in, in the UK, it's always a good thing to carry is a map and compass. No one likes getting lost today. And if you don't know how to use a map and compass, check these videos out or get yourself on a navigation course, details of which will be below. So yeah, map and compass needed just to make sure I'm on the right trail. Let's push on. Oh, I'm on the side of the hill, overlooking the valley. The church, I don't know if you can see it, is just way down there. I think you can see the river. Let's see if I can zoom you in. So as we're looking, the river's going down there. The church oh, is way in the distance. So yeah, covered a few miles since there. What we do for these videos, eh? But uh, it's an area I haven't explored, even though it's only, you know, not even two miles from home. I never walked this bit before, so it's good to explore your, your local area, isn't it? So hopefully you're gonna find somewhere to stop now for a, a drink and uh, talk a little bit more about bushcraft. Let's go. Right, we found a spot, found a spot for lunch. We're in this woodland on top of the hill, on top of the valley. Oh yeah, that was a hard slog. Going from the, the river all the way onto the top of the hill overlooking the valley. But it was worth it. It's worth it for the views and for the exercise. Um, later on in the video, I'll give you a discount code uh, if you're interested to go to the bushcraft show. Plus I'll give you details on a bushcraft and survival weekend coming up um, next month. So uh, check that out later on in the video. So uh, yeah, bushcraft. So we talked about our clothing, what clothing you may need, and a little bit about maps, you know, if you are traveling on foot, isn't it? Somewhere new. So what else do you need for bushcraft? Well, you might go somewhere and the weather's not the best. Believe it or not, sometimes it rains, doesn't it? So a good shelter. Now you might be the John Rambo bushcraft. So you might not need some sort of tarp or shelter or poncho if the weather turns. You can fashion yourself up a little log cabin just using a Swiss army knife. But for most of us, the quickest and easiest thing to have is some sort of tarp shelter, whether it's a three by three tarp or an army basher or a canvas tarp, or in this case, a poncho. I carry this because if it turns wet, I can wear it. And then when it comes to it, doing a bit of bushcraft or make yourself a bit of lunch, I can just Put this up and keep the weather off. 
So, another thing to take is a good shelter or poncho. And then with your poncho is your cordage kit. So in this one, this is my cordage kit. I've got a couple of bungees, some pegs, some shock cord loops. They're good for pegs. Some bank line, some loops of bank line for my uh, Prusik knots. What else is in there? Oh yeah, just a few more pegs. So that's it really. So with the tarp or, or poncho, I can fashion any sort of shelter, keep me dry. Now, again, if you're, you know, the Batman of bushcraft, you could fashion your own cordage out of stinging nettles, couldn't you, or something? But carrying something like this is far easier, isn't it? Another item, cordage. All right, you found a spot, you've got a shelter up. Next thing you want to do, perhaps, is cook you some dinner or put a brew on. So what you need for that is some sort of stove, isn't it? So this could be a basic tent peg stove. You've got your jet boils, you've got your pocket rockets, you've got loads of different stoves, your hexi stoves, all sorts of stoves. You could dig a fire pit and have a fire, but depending on where you are, you know, depending on the time of year, if it's really dry, drought season, you don't want to be lighting fires. I like this little compact uh, twig stove, titanium, packs really small. That's a good thing to carry. Today I'm not going to have a fire because this is a private woodland and I haven't got permission to light fires and whatnot. I am sticking to the, the paths, sort of. So I'm just going to use my little gas burner. So in there, got my stove, but I also carry in there a spare lighter and a ferro rod. I got a couple of little hexi blocks as well. These are out of the Spanish ration packs. Just in case, you know, something wrong with the, the stove, it won't work. I got a bit of a backup solution. So there's your stove, but the stove's no good without a pot. Again, loads of different pots on the market. I like to use this little titanium mug come pot, but you got a whole plethora, that's a good word, isn't it? Of pots, mess tins, you know, cooking vessels, you name it, out there on the market. So it's whatever floats your boat today, whatever's best for you. I like this one because my analogy fits inside. So it's a good system for me. And talk about the analogy. The next thing you want to do is have sort of some sort of water container, isn't it? They can't make a brew without any water. They can't carry your water in your pockets. So make sure you've got a, a good water bottle. This one I like because it's single skin. I haven't done yet, but you could put this on the fire as well to boil water. So that's my stove, my pot, and water container. And I go alongside them, I like to carry, is a flask. You make a hot brew in here, you don't have to drink it all at once, you can just put it in your flask and drink it on the move, can't you? So yeah, good flask is essential for a hot brew. Now when it comes to water, again, you might be one of them guys who just camp 20 yards from the vehicle. But if you are someone who treks in the hills, forest or whatever it is, you might want a water purifier. So I carry this AquaPure filter. Say, I got the water stream from the river before. That's good to drink. So I use that now to make the brew. But there's loads of different water purifiers on the market. So, you know, anything from life straws to your Lifesaver jerry cans, there's loads of different water purifiers. So it's another thing to consider if you're into bushcraft, if you're not carrying your water from home, we haven't got a water source nearby, which is clean water. If you want a cup of tea, make sure you've got a water purifier as well. Now to go along with my stove and um, cooking stuff is my fire tin. So in there, if I want to make a fire, whether it's keeping warm, keeping the midges away, cooking on it or making a brew, I got my fire kit. Now if you're a serious bushcrafter, you think, I don't need a fire kit. All I need is a shoelace and I can make myself a bow drill and get a fire going, no problem at all. Well, good for you if you can. But if you can't, have a fire kit with loads of different ways of making a fire. So um, you're not spending two, three hours trying to get a fire going just because you think you're, you know, Ray Mears. Get a fire kit, get it going in a couple of minutes and then enjoy yourself, isn't it? Right, so we're nearly ready for a brew. And to do that, we need a brew kit, don't we? These little organizers, by the way, are from TRC Outdoors. But yeah, brew kit. So in there, oh, got some wipes. Got hot chocolates, tea bags, matches, sugars, milk, 
in with an oxo cube for that bit of water nice hot chocolate that's the way to go i think that's what i'm having now we even got a bar of chocolate in there and a spare like that so that's my little brew kit i have bought a bit of lunch as well so i've got some wipes tomato and pasta salad there's a couple of other meals in here now bushcraft yes people carve spoons cups all sorts of things like i say i'm not even really into that so i need a fork so titanium and spork that's the way to go for me anyway right that's enough about that let's get this bloody brew on and have something to eat and then we'll talk about the tools we need There we are, water's boiled, brew's made. I know it's cheating a little, isn't it? Especially talking about bushcraft. I should be doing some sort of Dakota fire pit or something, and some sort of elaborate structure just to hang my pot. But uh, no, means must, isn't it? Yes, you've got plenty of time and that's all you add. You know, it's good to know the skills to do that, but if you're only out for a couple of hours, why waste your time doing all that? You want a cup of tea or a cup of hot chocolate, get the gas burner out, and it's done in minutes, isn't it? Yummy. Right then, tools. What tools do you need for bushcraft? Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It's some sort of cutting tools. So if you're out in the woods fashioning some sort of shelter, you might need some poles for your tarp. You might need a pot stand. You might want to cut a branch from an existing piece of wood or a tree or whatever it is. So a good folding saw. Now, I know what you're going to say. It's a silky or a, or a back old Laplander. Yes, I agree. They are some fantastic saws. Silky, I've got a silky. Oh, I've had this, I don't know, years. Now it's not the big fashionable katana ones, or whatever, I don't know what they're called. It's just a good folding saw. Really sharp. Does the trick. Yes, and before you say, always oh, your back of Laplander, I haven't got one. Yes, I know back of Laplanders are very good saws and they seem to be the go to for everyone, but you know, it's horses for course, isn't it? But these cheap, you know, 10 pound saws work just as well just as sharp the build quality probably not as good but not far off it's just plastic isn't it it's molded plastic with a thumb and catch for locking and the blade yes the blade on the silky is gonna be better than this one but for the amount of use I give it you know once in a blue moon these cheap ones are good enough good enough for me anyway yeah so that's a folding saw essential kit really when you come to a bit of bushcraft I also carry this Gerber, this unfolds to make a, a bow saw. Now you might see these fancy ones made of wood, you know, and they, they tighten up the string to get them nice and taut. This is this does just the job. A little bit bulky to carry, perhaps in your bag, but if you've got a really thick piece of wood, the handsaw might not cut it, so this is where you need the bow saw. So it's a good addition to the kit as well. So there's your saws. These are the saws I carry anyway, you know. Your folding saw and your your bush saw or your your um, bow saw. Now another thing to con consider is an axe, isn't it? Now again, hundreds, thousands of different axes out there. I'm not telling you which one to get, which one's the best. You know, most bushcrafters you see on YouTube they all carry the same sort of axe. I use this Mora axe for a long time, and it's done a lot of work. Yeah, very good, and it's lightweight, compact. You know, we're not chopping down trees. You know, only cutting firewood. This does a really good job. I now have this Beavercraft. I think it's the AX3 hand forged axe. Slightly short handle, but yeah, this is a Brita axe. A lot better for splitting. So, like I say, there's loads of different axes on the market. Loads of different style of axes, depending on what the job you want for the axe. But a good hatchet or a good small woodsman's axe. Um, Depending on what sort of activities you're doing, obviously. But it's a good thing to put in your bag, I think. So there's your saws and your axes. What about knives, I usually say? What about knives? Come on, get to the knives. We all want to know about the knives. Again, there's loads of different knives, isn't there? I'm a bugger for collecting knives. And I'm not really into knives that much. But it's an essential tool, isn't it, for bushcraft. No matter what you're doing. But there's loads of different tasks I like to do, from chopping wood to chopping tomatoes, isn't it? So, Amora. A fantastic knife 
really sharp, really good blades, really good value for money. Does a lot of jobs and an excellent addition to your kit. This bushcraft knife, this is a beaver craft. Again, a very good knife. It's a little bit dirty. Need to clean it up a bit. Very good, but yeah, that is sharp. So yeah, very good knife. Bushcraft knife wants to be full tang if anything. So, you know, if you are getting a bit of welly, uh, batten in timber, you know it's not going to fold up on you. So yeah, very good bushcraft knife for beaver craft, and really good value for money. You know, 40, 50 quid, you get a really good knife for that. Knives from you got your Gerber knives. These are flat grind, good for um, food prep and all that sort of stuff. This is a Zapas handy. More of a tactical knife, but it'll do most jobs. Oh, you got the pig. Army issue spiral knife. Yeah, you're not gonna do your fine work of that. But yeah, you want some trees coming down. Or you're processing your firewood. If you haven't got an axe, that's the next best thing. So knives, bring a bit of kit. I even carry a folder in my pocket. I wouldn't want to batten Tim with it, obviously, but I do a lot of jobs on a the camp. There you go. Know, cutting paracord, having a shave, whatever you want. So there's your tools really, isn't it? You've got your, your saws, your axes, and your knives. So there we are, so you come up for the day, you've got your clothes sorted, shelter sorted in case it starts raining. You want a cup of tea, so you've got your stove sorted, you've got your pot sorted, you've got your brew kit done, made. Um, you need to get a fire going, so you've got your wood processing, you've got your saws, you've got your axes, you want to do some bit more fine work, you've got your knives, haven't you? So that's your kit, isn't it? That's your basic bushcraft kit. Except for your knowledge, obviously, how to use all the stuff, isn't it? So, what next, you think? What is the next thing you need? Well, a pretty important piece of kit, I reckon. That's your first aid kit, isn't it? So, you're messing around with knives, axes, you know, edge tools. You could injure yourself, you know. So you want to carry a good, decent first aid kit. Now, the type of kit you carry will obviously depend on what the activity you're doing, so if you're not using edge tools, you might just have a bit of a brew up on a fire out in the countryside. So you just need a basic first aid kit, you know, perhaps some burn gel or something like that. But if you are using edge tools, you might cut your fingers, you might slip with the axe and have a nasty cut on your leg or your arm. So a good, decent first aid kit is essential. You've got all attack in here from your trauma dressings, your tourniquets, all your bandages, all your bits and bobs are in here, aren't they? You know, you've even got your trauma shears. So th that's my first aid kit. I got a trauma kit, that one. I do carry smaller ones as well. And a good thing I would do, not just carrying your, your first aid kit, is doing a first aid course as well. So you know the basics. Because you might be out with a group, some hurt themselves really bad, you might be in the middle of nowhere. So that initial first aid response could be life-saving, couldn't it? Now, if you want to see more about my trauma kit, check the video out. Oh, now along lines of first aid kit, if you do find yourself injured and you might be on your own and you need to call for help, have an emergency whistle as well. Another thing to consider is a head torch. For whatever reason, you haven't planned to be out when it gets dark, but again, you might get lost, might hurt yourself, or whatever it is, you find yourself in the dark, make sure you've got a good head torch. Off. And that's basically it. Except for one more thing. And that's a good bag to put everything in. So that's it basically guys. So that's my list of bushcraft items you want to take out with your bushcrafting. Um, just to recap, some good sensible clothing, good pair of gloves, a shelter, obviously cordage kit. Then you've got your cooking stuff. You know, if you want to make yourself a cup of tea, you need a stove. And then you want your cooking pot. Water bottle. If you are somewhere where you haven't got fresh water, clean water, you want your water filter as well. You want your fire kit with your ferro rods and your matches and all different ways of lighting fires. So get the firewood, you need your saws and your axes. Then you might want to make feather sticks. Or you might want to fashion some pegs for your top. Wherever it is, you need a good knife to know. Then you've got your first aid kit. So if you do cut yourself really badly, or someone else in the group has hurt themselves, you've got a good, decent first aid kit and the knowledge how to use it. And a decent bag to put all your stuff in. That's basically it. Now, if you do want to learn more about bushcraft and survival, there's a weekend course um, here at the bug out with Tom, prepared Pathfinder and his team from First In Events. Put the details below. 
you will learn all sorts of things from bushcraft, survival, animal tracking. Everything's covered in that two days. So yeah, that'll be a great course to get on. So get yourself on that. And if you are into bushcraft and you want to go to the bushcraft show this, this year, use this code and get 10% off your entry tickets. So that's it guys. That's my quick introduction into bushcraft and what things you need for it. If you can think of anything else, anything I missed out, put them in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, please think about liking, subscribing, hit the notification bell. And if you want to see some more videos, check that one out and that one. And I'll catch you again next time. All the best.